We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 crisis, no. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 3 of 2022, with Philip Jones and myself, Philip Keeler. On tonight's podcast, Britain is braced for higher energy costs. Social media is terrible for British school children's mental health. Russia's planning a fake attack to justify invasion of Ukraine. And I currently have COVID-19. I'll tell you my experience living with the virus. We're heard wherever you get your podcasts from, including Apple, Google and Spotify. Find us also now on YouTube. This is Strange But True Radio for a mixed up generation. Britain is braced for higher energy costs. Star Wars toy collector and our Chancellor Rishi Sunak has uh, told us we are paying more for our power as the price cap is to rise again and inflation expected to hit 7%. That's a heck of a lot. F- Phil, um, this looks like a terrible situation for families to be in already in fuel poverty, as they, they're calling it now. And those of us about to go into fuel poverty because of all of this. Um, why, why is this happening now? Um, it's to do, I think it's to do with the threat from Russia in the Ukraine because Russia, Europe, the European Union relies on Russia for 30% of their gas. And as such, if, if the Russians are threatening the EU, the, suppl- the general gas supply is threatened. So that means supply isn't as prevalent, which means prices go up, very supply and demand. But I equation. thought we had all these wind farms and uh, renewable energy sources. I thought, thought things were going to be OK. The UK, isn't, the UK doesn't, isn't affected as much by what Russia does because our, our imports of Russian gas is very low. I think it's less than 1%. But um, that doesn't stop the energy companies being able to create a hike in prices. Because they're under threat. The supply is under threat, therefore the prices go up. Okay. Simple as that. So Rishi Sunak is, um, is sort of going to give people hundreds of pounds this year through, um, uh, through council tax, I believe. Is that, is that going to work? I don't think so. I think what Rishi Sunak does is he relates money to how much Star Wars toys cost. <laughs> So if you can buy a decent Star Wars toy for 200 quid, he thinks that'll, that'll, that'll be all right for the poor. Oh, Chewbacca. <laughs> yes. No, it's crazy. I mean, 200 quid, you have to pay it back. I mean, it, you have to pay it back. Why would you bother to create that much bureaucracy for the yeah. sake of 200 quid? And can it's I just say, to our anyone. worldwide listeners... Um, we haven't. I don't know whether we've said this before. Rishi Sunak is one of the most richest people in our country. Oh, that's tr- well. His so he doesn't live in our world, everybody. His father. That's absolutely true. His father-in-law is a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. And he's minted. He worked for banks and made absolute fortunes, um, millions, millions. And so he's respected because he's got money. But I find a lot of people who have loads of money become remarkably inadequate, as mm. you can see by our government. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. That aspect of society is very interesting. The more money you have, the more incompetent you become. It seems to be. I have seen a lot of criticism um, of the the price cap that they're saying, actually, this price cap is is way too much. It doesn't work. Well, I don't. It seems to me to be a fiction. Yeah, because the Guardian said this is how they calculate it. So I went on and looked at it to see how it's calculated. And no one said anything. How do you calculate a, a figure of one thousand nine hundred seventy-one pounds? Why? Where does that come from? And if you've got a massive house, a massive a mansion with a hundred servants, yeah. is your price bill capped at nineteen hundred seventy-one? And if you've got a one-bedroom flat that you live on your own, is that capped at nineteen seventy-one as well? Yeah. What's going on? So I looked to try and find out how they calculated, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So that's a bit all a bit weird. And then 
they're saying that the energy companies, because of the price cap, were unable to charge what they should charge because the prices of the suppliers had increased their charges. If that's the case, why have all the profits gone up? And then Rishi Sunak, at the same time, is taking the wanting to give us 200 quid, he's taking money off everybody by a national insurance increase. Yeah, yeah. So it's, he's robbing Peter to pay Paul. He's trying to gain political points by saying, I'm giving everybody some money, I'm giving you all 200 quid, and he thinks that's going to appease the masses. Yeah. Well, it's, an, it's, a, it's a travesty. It's absolutely appalling. Why is he taking money with one hand and giving it back with another at a massive cost in bureaucracy? It's absolutely ridiculous. And he also, he, this is a £9 billion recovery package he's paying. £9 billion, he says. Right? So, if he's so concerned about recovery packages, where's £50 billion, £50 billion, £50, million gone? Yeah. So, £50,000 million disappeared on government contracts yeah. during the pandemic. And on the day of party, the party gate was announced, <laughs> on the same day they leaked party gate, there was also a news story that the Good Law Project had secured a prosecution against the government for unlawful conduct in their awarding of fifty billion pounds worth of contracts. Yeah. So how come it how come it came on the same day? Because yeah. Johnson is known for diversion. If you ask him about one of his policies at one time, they said, "What do you like to do in your spare time?" He was saying he likes to paint buses on cardboard the side of cardboard boxes <laughs> which was what everybody was concerned about the fact that he was painting buses on the side everybody was distracted by that the the real um <laughs> meat and potatoes of the story was avoided entirely because people suddenly became interested in this farcical idea of him likes to paint buses on the side of cardboard boxes or cartons or something like that yeah so what he does is when he's in the Houses of Parliament and they ask him a question, he talks about something else so mm. that he diverts the questioner. And that questioner is often Sir Keir Starmer. And this happens all the time. So if you'd ripped a country off for 50 billion quid, mm. when would you leak Partygate? You'd leak it on the same day. Because yeah. if you leak it on the same day, everyone's going to be distracted by Partygate. So that is a terrible thing because... Tw that that party that fifty billion is five times the nurses' salaries. Where they, if they paid a hundred percent, so if they want to double the to double the nurses' salaries, they still have forty billion left over. Mm. And if that money hadn't disappeared, there would be no national insurance hike because the national insurance hike is only supposed to create uh, twelve billion pounds. So why are they bothering with a twelve billion pound national insurance hike and then giving back nine billion? Imagine the cost of the bureaucracy on that. And they're saying, oh, we haven't got enough nurses, we haven't got enough social workers, we haven't got um, less thing. I don't know, we haven't got enough police, we haven't got enough prison workers, we haven't got enough carpenters, we haven't got enough bricklayers, we haven't got enough painters and decorators. Let's employ them to do pointless, create pointless bureaucracy which wastes everybody's time. Mm. It's absolutely ludicrous. You couldn't make up how stupid this is. And government resources and time in the Houses of Commons is taken up creating nonsensical fundraising projects which shouldn't be in there in the first place. I mean, how could anybody believe that £37 billion, that's how much test and trace costs, £37 billion, the equivalent per head in Ireland costs £10 million. £10 million. Hmm. And, and the, the actual creation of the app in Ireland for their test and trace was about eight hundred thousand pounds. Okay, eight hundred thousand. So how come it's three thousand seven hundred times more expensive in the UK per capita than it is in Ireland? Yeah. I mean, could we not just borrow the app from Ireland and say they are lads? Here's a few hundred grand. We'll pay half. Mm -hmm. You pay half. We'll have the same thing. Happy days. But no, 37 billion disappeared. Where did it go? It went on contracts that were awarded unlawfully by the government. Mm -hmm. And that has been found by the courts. The system of justice that we have in this country, country found the government's conduct to be unlawful and nobody saying anything. Of course they're not saying anything on the BBC. I'll tell you why not. Because the BBC are under threat for their licence. There's an underlying 
tension between the BBC and the government because yeah. the government is saying, is your license worth it? And there's another farce. How much does it cost to collect the license? How much does it cost in legal fees and expenses and searches for people who haven't got a license so you can take the poorest to court? We can take the poorest to court because they haven't got a license. It's only going to affect the, the poor because they're the only ones who won't be able to afford it, Yeah. right? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of all the bureaucracy and then employ the people who, who, who create that bureaucracy to do something sensible that actually does something to benefit society, like maybe childcare, prison service, admin in the courts of justice. As soon as you do that, you free up so many resources that the, the legal systems take the pressures off the legal system and you don't have to throw more funds at the legal system in order to keep it going. At the moment, the backlog on criminal cases, thanks to the Tories, because they reduced the, the funding on criminal mm. law, is, I think, over seven months. They're waiting wow. seven months for a criminal law case. So if you're a good criminal and you want to break the law, now's the time to do it because the police don't want to nick you because it takes too long for them to do the paperwork because there aren't enough resources for them to do it. And even if they do, the UQ could have to be kept on remand for seven months, which they can't afford. So the whole system is in jeopardy. Mm. It's all in jeopardy. And guess who's responsible for it? buffoon boy johnson and the black shirts there's a lot of wasted money here isn't there oh, million, billion literally billions are disappearing evaporating <clears throat> the nhs they say the nhs the doctors haven't got enough time in the nhs so what they do is they have eight minutes per patient which means eight minutes per patient they say hello how are you interrupt you when you're talking after within 30 seconds apparently according to studies say what are your symptoms right with those symptoms you need this pill thank you very much off you go next hmm. so you're taking pills that have side effects nobody discusses exercise nobody discusses well few some do but no most of them don't you need to discuss diet and exercise. What's the underlying problem? What's causing this? Don't just temper the symptoms because you'll be back in a couple of weeks with another eight minutes. Yeah. And then another two weeks, you'll be back in another eight minutes. And so that eight minutes just is a self-perpetuating problem. What needs to happen is when you go to the doctor, the doctor says, hi, I've only got eight minutes. Take these pills. Go and see this dietitian. Go and see this health care guy, this exercise guy, you know, lifestyle coach. And talk to him about exercise and what you're doing in your daily routine to keep yourself healthy and so we can we can do something about the problem. But they don't do that. That needs to be addressed. Then we don't need as many doctors because the doctors won't be wasting their time on repeat patients. Yeah. It's it may but no one thinks about it in those um, those terms. Let's just bring it back to our original story then. So um the cost of living is going up for all of us this year. Yes. Yes. Um and we've got a worsening uh of inflation that's yes. gonna, they're saying is going to spiral out of control to to 7%. Yes. Um there's going to be a lot of poor people in this country suddenly. Yeah, that you know why, don't you? Why? We've what because we have we have queues of lorries at Dover on both sides of the channel due to the bureaucracy, more bureaucracy created by Brexit. Thanks, Nigel Farage. Yeah. Thanks, buffoon boy Johnson and the black shirts. Brexit has created queues of lorries from to Dover across Kent and to Calais on the other side of the channel. That can these queues are so big they can be seen from the moon. That's how big the queues are, right? So, um, it seemed the real problem difficulty is we've put sanctions up against ourselves. You know, when we have the, what the, what they're thinking of doing in Russia is they're thinking of putting sanctions, economic sanctions, up against the Russians because the economic sanctions will hurt the Russian economy. What Brexit did was put we put sanctions up our, <laughs> against ourselves which is exactly what we would do to another country if they were threatening us. So are you blaming so we, Brexit actually, on the rise oh, of Lord, our inflation? Of course, of course it is. Okay. Of course it is. I yeah. mean, it takes what used to take, it was a 24-hour turnaround with no bureaucracy at all, now takes days. Mm. Takes literally days. They can't do it. People are going out of business. Yeah. 
Mm. People can no longer perform the function that they used to. Mater- building materials have rocketed in price. I think wood is now more than double what it used to be before Brexit. I mean, it massive increases in price, delays, bureaucracy. People have to employ other people, more p- employees. Wage bills go up in companies to make them less competitive. They have to pass that cost on to somebody, and that's the consumer. You know, if you're if you're a small company. And you have to double your bureaucracy. You have to get someone in. The prices go up massively mm. in relation to in relation to your sales cost. I mean, it's just massively stupid. What we need to do is, I we we need to do this. We need to enter the single market again because if we don't, we're going to have problems. We, we've already got masses of problems with Northern Ireland. Half of the country is saying the reason for this, the reason for the, the border should be removed and that reason is because they can't there's a border in the north sea and if they don't have that if they don't have that border in the north sea they'll have to have a border across ireland if they have a border across ireland that threatens our negotiation our business deals with the united states of america united states of america provides 20 a fifth of our trade over a fifth of our trade is with world uh, international traders with the united states of america if we put a border across ireland that will be damaged and that'll that'll fall through the floor um, so we can't put a border across Ireland. So that means we have to put a border across the North Sea. If we put, if we continue with the border across the North Sea, that undermines Northern, the uh, Good Friday Agreement in order to keep the troubles at bay. And um, it also threatens the Irish economy. So therefore, because they are not able to freely trade with the UK as though they as, as they were before, and what we need to do at the very least is to rejoin the single market. Because we need to. Mm. I don't. I've, I've never advocated Brexit. Mm. I mean, I, a lot of people would turn around and criticise me for that. But I studied European law for a long period of time. I worked in Spain as a lawyer for six months. I studied law in Spain. I mean, I've got another. I've got quite a broad perception of this. Mm. And so I know. I knew when I, every time Nigel Farage <laughs> opened his mouth and talked about. Uh, what the European Union did, I knew he was lying. It was really frustrating. And David Davis, when he was talking about what the European Union does, he was lying too. When Boris Johnson was talking about what the European Union does, he was clueless. Mm. None of them. None of them make sense. None of them do. This is strange, but bizarre. This is strange, but true. Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're going to be talking about our children's mental health next.
Now, you can get the latest breaking news to your phone via Twitter from us, at us, using our handle at StrangeBTR. Handle again, StrangeBTR. Type us into Twitter, you'll get the latest breaking news. Contact us uh, by email as well if you have uh, any views of the show or would like to appear on the uh, on the podcast. Email is studio at strangebuttrueradio.com. Now then, social media is terrible for British school children's mental health. That's according to a report by children's mental health charity Place to Be, a national association of head teachers. Uh, They apparently found that pupils are experiencing anger, depression and low self-esteem due to online taunting, bullying and abuse. Um, It's something that I never experienced in my day at school because we didn't have social media. I don't think the internet even started until I was uh, maybe 16 or 17. Um, Phil, first of all then, do we think, uh, my question to you is, do do we think that kids should be on social media in the first place? Um, No. I think we should get rid of it altogether. Oh, no, all no, you can't it. do that. <laughs> I do think we should have a, have an age limit. I think, <laughs> uh, personally, I don't think kids should be on social media at all until they're, you know, 18. Maybe that's a bit late, but it would stop all this silliness, maybe. Well, we've got, we've elected, Bo- we've er- elected Boris Johnson, haven't we? That's, that's a consequence of social media. That's mm. how it affects people's minds. Mm. so much that we've managed to elect people like him that's what gets me but anyway no i'm going off on a tangent again it's my four, um, it's my 42 40, 42 42th birthday 42th do you say that 42nd no, 42nd 42 that's my 42th birthday everybody and even i i thank you i get really kind of upset when when I get sworn out on social media, and I'm not a kid, well, I'm like a kid, but I'm not a kid. Well, I, I think we need we need social interaction. I think it's very unnatural for us not to talk to each other because you can't bounce any ideas off anybody in particular because you don't know what the reactions are. Mm. You have to you have to wait for a reaction, and also when you when you the art of conversation is something that you have to learn. You can't, it's just not, it, it's not an instinct. You have to learn it. You have to learn how to respond to phraseology. You have to learn to respond to eye contact, um, gest- gesticulation. Um, and that's not a metaphor, by the way. And all those other things that people give you when you talk to them, you know, facial expression, lifting the eyebrows, the, the eye pupils, whether they are dilated or small, makes a difference to the way you you receive information from somebody. That's giving you a message. Some people say 90, only 10% of uh, communication is verbal. You have body, other forms of body language, you know, all of those things. If you take them away and put someone in a room on their own, mm. then that be- it all becomes very unnatural becomes mm. very unnatural indeed and so when you actually people misread signs because they're not used to them so you go out and especially now i mean now people's faces are covered all the time so you can't actually see what anybody's what the expression on somebody's face is and if you walk along and people smile at you that gives you pleasure because someone is smiling right i Something like people's faces that. covered i don't like seeing ugly bastards in the street yeah i know i know because you're a bit strange so phil aren't you let's yeah. face it yeah sitting at, sitting at home alone well <laughs> for long periods of time not that's going right. out that's because right. you don't because you don't want to that's because you spent too much time on social media yeah maybe maybe because you're not used to it i mean people who don't have who don't in some people who don't dislike in social interaction some people i mean there's obviously a proportion of society who don't like to go out at all but most people do i mean we are supposed to be uh, a race that needs social interaction in order to survive. So the more separated we are, the less natural we become, the less natural we become, the more insane our behaviour becomes, mm. I think. Mm. I mean, I just think I think it creates a very odd mindset if you're not used to social interaction. I really yeah. do. And I suppose, um, well, we'll talk COVID more about at, at the end of our show. I suppose the like, things like COVID have been stopping kids from going out so they've had to be more on social media to to contact their friends and then uh, i i saw a report that 
they're feeling excluded because they're not on uh, group WhatsApp groups anymore or they've been chucked out of things. And um, the, the reality is that social media is a main part of uh, young people's lives. It's a huge part of young people's lives. But you see, as I say, it, you're not... It, when I was a kid, they used, to, like, they used to say, you've got to sit in and do your homework. Yeah. And the pub was a mile away across the fields because I live way out. I live quite far out in the countryside. And they used to say you've got a choice. So they were saying to me, "You've got a choice: sit in when you're young, hate that, in a room on your own, or go ac- run across the fields on a beautiful summer's day, <clears> and then go and sit in the pub and have a couple of pints with all your mates and have a good laugh." So is that Guess what you which did? One? Yeah, <laughs> of course I did. And there were girls in the pub. What's that? Which I thought yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Amazing. There were no girls in my room. <laughs> well, they were. They were, but that was another matter. So anyway, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it, it, our instinct is to socially interact. We aren't, we're are we designed mm. to socially interact. But now, when I was a kid, it was a punishment. You, They'd say, go to your room. And you go, oh, no, I don't want to go to my room. So, well, they didn't ever do that to me. But anyway... If they, if lots of kids, as a punishment, if you did something wrong, you'd have to go and sit in your room. Yeah. Now, you tell kids you can't sit in your room, they go mad. Yeah, I want to sit Children, in my room. I want to be on the Xbox, exactly. PlayStation. Exactly. I want to be sitting on my own in my room in a fantasy world on PlayStation or Xbox. Give, take, try, try taking a kid up, try, try taking a telephone off a kid now. Apparently, they have a tantrum. Yeah. To me, that's a sign of mental illness. Yeah. So what we're having is, so you're 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 living in a more and a more a more and more ethereal world. Yeah. I mean, when I was a lad, anybody could change the wheel of a car. Well, all my mates could anyway. We could all change the wheel of a car. I doubt that many people could do that now. I can't do that. I wouldn't want to get dirty. I wouldn't go, exactly. want to get my hands dirty. No, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't want to get your hands dirty. No. We all used to have to roll around in the mud as part of our daily routine when we were kids. You know, none of this, none of this biological exclusion zone. Oh no, we're not going outside. No, I'm going back into my room. Yeah. You know, cotton world, cotton wool world. No, no, none of that. None of that. Because it didn't exist. If we wanted to talk to people, we had to go and meet them. You used to play with toilet rolls in your day, though, didn't you? And, what do you mean? And play bits with of wood. Bits of oh, sorry. Yeah, we used to. We could have Two hours. We could have hours of fun just by, you know, with a piece of old toilet roll and a squeezy bottle and some sticky back plastic. We could, you know, that would be, we could be, you'd give us that. We were happy. We were happy. Uh, tell, kids, tell kids that nowadays and bah, they don't no. believe you, do they? No. You just <laughs> anyway, my point being that it, I, it's not healthy to sit in your room on your own. It's really not. No. Get yeah. out, get out there, go and meet your friends in the park. Get out there into the COVID world yeah. that we live in. No, put get your mask out there. on. Get, put no, your gas no mask on. Masks. You don't have to wear masks anymore. Have a jab every hour, vaccine no. every hour. You'll be fine. No, don't worry about it. No. <laughs> right, get this out, is. <laughs> this is uh, slowly disintegrating this conversation. This is. Uh, <laughs> what, who are we? Um, this is News Talk on Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're going to be talking about Russia and Ukraine. Give you the latest updates next. Oh, 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 oh,
Now then, Russia's planning a fake attack to justify the invasion of Ukraine. That's according to US intelligence, who have uncovered the findings, according to our foreign secretary and uh, cheese specialist, Liz Truss. Because Liz Truss, all she goes on about is cheese this and cheese that. Um, She likes blue cheese. I think she likes cheddar, but I I think she likes the smelliest cheese uh, ever that's going because she's um, she's a cheese specialist. Anyway, the US understands Russia was going to use actors and even corpses to create a propaganda video. Um, Phil, are you surprised? Are you surprised to hear this uh, news coming out of Russia that they were planning a, a fake attack? I don't believe Russia were. I think that was complete hype by the United States of America. Other things that the U- United States have said that they're preparing for an invasion and they're bringing blood supplies closer to the border, which means they're expecting to invade, mm. um, weren't simply weren't true. Now, we uh, try and be impartial on this show, and I suppose we should be on the side of the West being that we are British, but I, I do some, I, I do feel sorry for for Russia at times because we we see them as these bad dogs, the, the aggressors, but actually we are just as bad, aren't we? Because the the US are actually no stranger to false flags uh, like this. Um, there was a, an operation called Operation Northwards, wasn't there? There was in 1962 um, where they were going to attack. Um, there was going to be, hold on, they were going to make, they were going to create terrorist attacks in the United States and they were going against Cuban US citizens and they were going to be created by the Americans themselves mm. for, to give them a reason to attack Cuba. So, so but, but J, John F. Kennedy said no. John F. Kennedy said no to the proposal. Mm. And John F. Kennedy was shot, murdered yeah. by the United States. So we think we think by the oil oligarchs, but there you go. Oh, okay. Wow. So I I'm not surprised that you know that there's this fake attack um, story in our press about Russia, but it is just to note that you know we are just as bad, and it it, it is we, we're trying. Everyone's trying to be get the upper hand here. It's all media hype. We're being we're being kind of how do i say it to me it's like this we're being sold down the river mm. you know we're they're just saying to us what things in order to create a, a, a consensus of opinion which isn't necessarily true but it's entirely based on the political ideology that they want to convince us of and they're saying they're making Russia out to be the bad people yeah. when R- Russia aren't necessarily being the bad people. In this case, uh, Russia do not want NATO to build up uh, forces close to their borders. And that's what they're complaining about. That's why they've amassed 100,000 troops, we are told, on the borders of Ukraine. Um they're not necessarily wanting to invade Ukraine at this moment, as far as we know. Yeah. Um, they want, they just want us to have put some uh, concessions in place to ensure that NATO don't start threatening their borders. That's what they're saying. And if the Americans are coming up with ludicrous accusations against the Russians, which is quite normal, I suppose, then they'll then then they are, they're within their rights to stand up and say well we don't want anybody to build up uh troops on our on our on our borders because they feel threatened by us as much as we feel threatened by them in fact more so because the american army is a lot bigger the foreign minister you know? in russia said something very kind to liz trust uh, this week didn't she didn't he um he did and bless her we're all glad that she's out there talking to them because at least she's not here be nicer if she went oh she's going to australia she went to australia recently didn't she on a private jet that cost five hundred thousand pounds <laughs> to go to us five well, that's half a million quid and she said it was needed in case she was called elsewhere i mean she must be some on, what would you call it some kind of narcissist she must be but when um hold on let me see if i can find it uh yeah she he said um uh, what's his name? Uh, the Russian Sergei. 
Lavanov. Lavanov, that's it, yeah. So, yeah, Lavanov. He said, um, Liz, but Liz Truss was standing very close to him <laughs> at, at a podium, or whatever you call him, a lectern, and um, he described that discussion in terms that were far from diplomatic. He said it was like a conversation with a deaf person mm. who is here but doesn't hear. <laughs> Great. And she, we've sent her over to negotiate. She's so wooden. She probably just sat, stood there, and he was, he was just trying to have a chat with her, but he can't do that for obvious reason. And um, it got worse, apparently. When Liz Truss insisted the UK is resolute in pursuing a diplomatic path mm. to avert a war with the Ukraine... And something, and something Boris Johnson is very much behind. There was a long, drawn-out sign from um, Mr. Lavanov. <laughs> He's actually been in power in his uh, job for about 20 years plus, hasn't he? Since 2012, yeah. Mm. And she's been in power. She's had her uh, position as Foreign Secretary for five months. I think we should just send her to talk... Well, I think we should just send her around Cheddar Gorge, just... I think we should just give her a little cottage near the Cheddar Gorge so she could be near cheese production. I think yeah, that's I think she'd like that. For. Yeah, I think that's all she's good for. We, I don't <laughs> know what she's doing in the position she's in. I mean, half a million quid for a one plane ride in these t- in these days when everybody else is <clears throat> they're taking the twenty pounds away from people. You know that that twenty pounds that the poorest were getting during um, during the pandemic just to help them pay the electricity and gas bill that's been taken away so we could you know i mean surely half a million could help many many people can i ask that's you about this money. right so um the french and the germans are are doing a lot of round table talks with russia at the moment and they are actually leading these conversations um maybe if this happened five years earlier i would like to put to you that it would have been britain leading these conversations but because we're out of europe cool um it's yeah. it's over to the french and the germans and we are now this little island nation and our power seems to have gone exactly we're a toothless lion you know we are now representing 60 million people we're being instead of being part of a club of 500 million 500 million we were a powerful member of the eu and now we're just an island off the coast of the biggest trading market in the world mm. and that biggest trading market in the world have good relations i want to maintain good relations with russia because we buy they buy 30 percent of their gas from russia yeah. russia wants to retain that agreement because obviously they make a profit out of it and that's good for their economy so they don't want to lose that arrangement either because it's bad for both parties if it goes wrong. So they're in a much, much stronger, infinitely stronger position than we are in relation to negotiation of these terms. And why would he want to listen to Liz Truss anyway? Because we don't have that. We don't have as much, nearly, anywhere near as much trade with Russia as the rest of Europe does. So, you know, to, we're just like a toothless old lion mm. sitting down there. With, with, and, the, and the bite, uh, we've, lo- we've, lost our, we've lost our strength. And that's down to Brexit. That's down to buffoon boy Johnson and the black shirts along with Nigel Farage Sad and times. Cameron, of course. Sad it's times. bad. It's yeah. worse than people realise. I, it's I saw, very, very bad. Going, talking about Boris Johnson very briefly, I saw a report in the news um, and it said that his Conservative Party, his some of his top MPs are saying, if if you're found that, you know, that the Met Police found that you're at these parties and everything, do not cling to power. They've said that to him. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he's, uh, Tony, I think Tony Blair said he'd leave if he was under he, if he was under investigation. He would resign. Yeah. I mean, they're saying Nick uh, Cressida Dix just resigned because uh, the she's, mayor she's the, said, um, the chief the of the Met Public, Police. Yeah. Yeah. She. Yeah. The, the chief of the Met Police has resigned because she said the British public have lost confidence in her. So mm. she's resigned. So why hasn't Buffoon Boy Johnson re- resigned? Mm. Because everyone's lost confidence in him, including people overseas. The Spanish all know about it. The Americans all know about it. Everybody around the world knows that that they were having parties after they told everybody not to have parties. They all know the fact that the Queen's husband's funeral was the follow was on the day after one of these parties where she wasn't allowed to have people mourning. They all know that 
they all know that Boris Buffy and Boy Johnson had to apologise to the Queen mm. for his behaviour. I think that was one so, of the saddest pictures to come out of COVID, actually, to see the Queen uh, on her own in at that church service, sat on her it own. Is, it, it is very sad. It's very sad. Mm. He should resign. There's no, there's no two ways about it. I mean, even John Majors said that he, we can't have a prime minister who who behaves in the way that uh, Johnson does. Mm. But there is something more to to get back onto this. Um, the British a British uh, general said this morning on Radio Four that um, in order to ensure a third world war, we should keep we should um, allow british troops to fight against the russians i mean pe- this is a frightening situation if russians invade ukraine which i don't think they're going to do or hopefully they won't then it could cause huge problems and the general said if we want to ensure world war three we'll have british troops fighting in the ukraine however he said we're withdrawing all our troops from the ukraine mm. the ukraine is not part of nato so we won't get involved physically we've given support and training to um, Ukrainian army, we've given them something like 2,000 handheld anti-tank weapons, which are pretty amazing. Um, and so, But doesn't the fact that we've helped Ukraine so much to give them weapons, doesn't that actually make us part of it? This is something I was trying to work out this morning, but generally speaking, if you supply arms, it does. you are part of it, but you're not involved in the war itself. Because hmm. you're not using them, you've just supplied them. Although that's an irony, because say, for example, we're supplying arms to Saudi Arabia, and we're training pilots and, and um, soldiers, the army in Saudi Arabia, so that they can attack uh, Syria. But we make a lot of money out of that. Then the Syrian refugee, the, then obviously war creates refugees. The Syrian refugees have to go across Europe to get to the UK and and go into live in Europe because they're in fear of their lives. Yeah. And who's fueling the war? Well, the yeah. British. Yeah. And then we're complaining about refugees. Well, we create the refugees, which <laughs> is kind of ironic. We're yeah. creating the problem ourselves. And they're saying, oh, they're coming here. Yeah, of course they are. But nobody talks about. We're causing the problem. No, but you see the other again. This is all. War is absolutely pointless. I mean, they're saying, "Oh, we make billions of pounds out of selling arms around the world." Well, if they if the arms are used to just for defence, that's fine. But as soon as they're actually used in war, then it's a massive problem. But they and they are used in war, and I can't. I don't understand why there's a war in Syria. I've got no idea. I've yeah. got absolutely no clue. I'd have to research it. I know there's a war in Syria. I know that fantastic history is being, fantastic um, architecture is being destroyed, which is, you know, a, thousand, a couple of thousand years old, a lot of it. And, and why? Why are, pe- why are people's lives destroyed just so that we can make a few bucks? I mean, money only has value if, it, if you do good with it. If you're doing, if you have, if, you, if your life is spent supplying arms so that people people can be killed. What's the point of your life? Exactly. This is News Talk on Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're going to talk about my experience with COVID-19 next.
I've just been looking on our website, strangebuttrueradio.com, and I've seen a great deal for you, dear listener. Currently, on our website, you can get three months of Audible for 99p. Now, Audible is a great service. You basically, if you can't be, can't be bothered, I nearly said another word then, if you can't be bothered to read, you can listen to your books. Um, and uh, currently, they've got the latest, one of the latest books that I'd like to read. I think it's uh, just been in the mo- in the movies, and it's, uh, it's a re-release of an old one. June, they've got June uh, on there by Frank Herbert. Phil, have you have you uh, what, you must have watched June before? No, no, you're not into Because the that. original the original film was really boring. Apparently, it was, was terrible. It? Oh. The new one I haven't got around to watching yet, which I will watch because apparently it's very good. And it's a very interesting concept, but I don't know what the concept is. Okay. Do you know what the concept is? I've no idea. My, I know my dad used to be a fan of Dune and um, would go on about it, but I've never watched it or listened to it. So I might subscribe to Audible for 99p for three I months. Said- I've listened to some books on Audible. Very interesting. They're Very good. good. They're good. Fantastic, okay. yeah. Go to our website, strangebuttrueradio.com and uh, click the link on the left-hand side of the page. Right then, I have COVID-19. It's something I've been concerned about getting for the last couple of years um, and I finally have it. But it hasn't been as bad as I thought. I'm still here uh, being looked after by my partner, Tom. Uh, who's actually also got it, so we've been looking after each other, really. And uh, we're still being jumped on uh, each morning by our dog. Life has continued. Um, Phil, out of all the people to get this virus, I'm really annoyed that it's evaded my 20-second hand-washing uh, regime every day, every few minutes. How, how do you think I got it? I have no idea. It probably just travelled in the air and you got it like you would any flu epidemic. I mean, you might have got it from the supermarket or anywhere, Phil. I mean, where do you get flu from? It's exactly the same. COVID is a flu, a form of flu. <clears throat> yeah. It? Yeah, well, it, yeah, so, I mean, some would say that that it is true and it certainly has been like flu uh, for me. I, I was a bit concerned um, because I've got... Uh, I've currently got a DVT because I dislocated my knee and night and then I've got a pulmonary aneurysm in my, in my lung. So I was a bit concerned that that was going to be quite critical for me. But I've actually, apart from losing my voice and having a sore throat where I couldn't really speak for a, about four days, it has been all right. Good. So how are you? So you're you're feeling a lot better. You did you feel? How was it? I mean, what were the symptoms? Was it like flu? I yeah. Mean, was, did you? Yeah, feel I guess it like- was. I guess it was. I mean, I have the flu jab each year, and I've had my three jabs of uh, COVID uh, vaccine. Um, but yeah, I had a sore throat, uh, streaming nose, a, a, a cough. I, actually, the cough was really quite bad because that was I could feel my upper body hurting uh, because of the cough that it was a cough like I've never had before um I definitely wouldn't have wanted my older parents to get this virus um but because you're concerned about underlying underlying symptoms aren't you because you're saying that if you get this then it becomes dangerous yeah. if you would you say that if you didn't have underlying symptoms um such as you do yourself because you yeah. have health health difficulties yeah. on occasion well i mean um, then- if you didn't have underlying symptoms you're probably going to be okay but saying that there have been reports in the news that people with no no underlying symptoms have have become very very ill um so it's it's a bit of a luck of a draw but the vast majority of people have been all right and you're so yeah i mean the vast majority if, if you actually get the new variant you're far less likely to die from it, aren't you? Than um, you would otherwise. I think Omicron, they're saying, is a, a lesser strain because this virus actually doesn't really want to kill people. It wants to um, sort of continue, doesn't it? Yeah, because if, if, if a virus kills its host, then it no longer has a host and it's killing itself. A bit like, a bit like Brexit. 
not looking after yourself, shooting yourself in the foot, why would you want to do that? You, it's only a form of self-harm. So you want to keep your host alive so that you can go back and stay alive living in that person. Mm. That's what you want to do yeah. as a virus. So the natural cycle would be exactly the same as, as all viruses, apparently. They peak, and when they peak and they start killing their host, then they go into decline and they realize that this is not a good idea so they that so the uh, virus becomes less uh, what's the word less dangerous to people so this is the by. mad thing um phil this is the mad thing about this right so the government say after 10 days you don't yep. have to self-isolate however if you test on your fifth day of having the virus and you're then negative with the lateral flow and mm -hmm. the, the sixth day and you're negative, then you can leave early. However, mm -hmm. I'm still COVID positive after the seventh day, I think now. Yep. Um, so I still have to stay in until those 10 days are up. And if I'm COVID positive on the lateral flow after the 10 days, I can actually s still go out into the community. I well, find I that a bit mad. I think it's probably because this is just a, now it's COVID-19 has turned into a strong flu. Yeah. A, a, a strong flu. But what is equally bizarre is they're telling you to test every day, aren't they? Uh, after the fifth day. And if you get two negatives, then you can go out into the community. And do early. you pay for those? Do you pay for those tests? No, no. We just got them from the chemist. From the national. So the chemist, someone's paying for them, aren't they? Well, we are, I guess. Somehow yeah, we are. So if, it's, if, if, um, if you own shares in a test company, that's good for you, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, by the way. So the more tests, well, if you're an MP and you own shares in a testing company, that's good for you. So you make more make money every time we test. So but it does make me laugh. You want people to test. When I open the box, it's got a test certificate. Guess where it's come from? China. China. They've stamped it to say this is this has been quality tested. Brilliant. Absolute genius. So someone's importing those tests from China. Who made the then, virus, gave it to us. Made, made, made the virus. China's, the Chinese are making money. And then the people who are distributing the tests are making money. Yeah. So if you, own, if you own shares in one of those companies and you're the person who provides those contracts to import those tests, then you're making money. Guess, I bet, I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, politicians are involved in the provision of those contracts to provide testing services to the NHS. Yeah, yeah. And which means, so now we've got a strong flu, which is not likely to give you a case. Apparently, the number of cases in the UK were something like 8.3 million. Yeah. And we had 159,000 deaths. Yeah, that sounds about right. So we have 159,000 deaths as when we've had 8.3 million cases. So the chances of you dying are very low. Then there's, there's government statistics, which I haven't found yet, and I have looked for them. People told me that the government statistics say 17,000 people died from COVID without underlying symptoms. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who died from COVID had another illness or other underlying symptoms. The 17,000 who died from COVID without underlying symptoms had an average age of 82. Right. So, basically, if that's true, something is seriously amiss. And something which is equally weird is there are a number, which I've been looking for, I haven't found them yet, but there are a number of deaths. So, normally, in the period of time since... Um, covid began we'd have normally about 800,000 deaths that's normal yeah we have about 30,000 deaths a month in england we have a thousand deaths a day basically more or less a bit more probably yeah so if you said from the beginning of the pandemic we had deaths of about 800,000 that wouldn't be far out yeah now if you think about all of the de if you think about there's only 17,000 deaths without underlying symptoms that means you've got deaths with underlying symptoms of 142,000. Yeah. Okay? So 142,000 people have died, of co they say, of COVID, but they already had another illness. Yeah. So what is the truth in this? Uh, it's very so difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult out. to say, yeah. So they're saying a quarter of the death, less than a quarter of the deaths since the pandemic began 
were of COVID, but all of those deaths that are purported to be from COVID were a result of another disease and COVID. Well. Together. Plus, together. Plus, COVID is a form of flu. And guess what? In the winter of 2020, there, were no, there wasn't one death from flu when there normally is because suddenly flu had disappeared. We and so the immediate... The immediate response to that was, well, of course nobody got flu because we're all wearing masks. Well, if that were the case, we wouldn't get COVID either, would we? That's because true. Because COVID is a flu. we're wearing masks. Because we're all wearing masks. But, so COVID, but COVID is a form of flu. Mm. So what, how much of the, what, I'm asking a question. I'm not making a statement. People are going to turn around and go and say, oh, he's saying that COVID's alive. What I'm saying is there's too many unanswered questions. Mm. Way too many, and then that well, there was another. There was another thing that they said that in India they managed to curb the right in one region of India they managed to curb the rise of COVID completely. Right, they turned it around, and uh, Biden went to India to discuss this matter, and it was decided that they wouldn't share that information. <laughs> Why wouldn't you share? Where the information? did you hear that from? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I've heard it on. No, this is where this is where it gets a bit dodgy because a lot of people will say this is dodgy. Joe Rogan. Oh, I don't like him. He he, he was interviewed. He He's was always been one of these people that doesn't believe yeah, but COVID. I quite though. like it. No, but I don't care. He said the the guy he interviewed is the guy who is who was involved in the development of the COVID vaccines. I'm not telling you the. I'm not telling you half of what he said. No. I mean, if if I went into what was said in that interview, people would be up in arms. I mean, I, for me, I found it fascinating. I tend to believe those things. A lot of people would say I'm a fool for doing for saying that, but fair enough. But I, 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 I think there's I, I think there's something seriously amiss. Okay. There's something we're not being told. If we consider the statistics, they say 159,000 have died in England as a consequence of COVID. When when practically all of them had underlying symptoms from other diseases, there's suddenly there's no flu. That's all gone. People, you know, somebody who had a brain hemorrhage was said to have died from COVID. Somebody who had car accident is said to have died from COVID. Something yeah. is amiss. That's the other side of the argument. I'm not sure whether I like Joe Rogan. I uh, have heard of him. It just comes across as a bit, a bit of a smart Alec, really. But um, I know, I know he's got lots of fans. Check that interview out if you can find it be interesting to to get your views on that all right that's it for this edition of strange but true radio news talk for a mixed up generation with philip jones and myself philip keeler join us each and every saturday evening for a new podcast to download on trending news stories of the week we're available to download from around 20 hundred hours british time take care of yourselves see you next week We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. If Cressida Dick has to resign because the British public have lost confidence in her, surely buffoon boy Johnson must follow suit. Well, if you want your news, that's strange but true. Look, they're all right, aren't they? Really.